Good morning members. Um, so I'm Amanda and I do a lot of hybridizing and I started this group initially as a hybridization and seed growing group which a few years ago we decided to expand it to become quite a larger community so over 2,000 members now and we still go back to our grassroots which is growing from seed and I hybridize uh, Bill Berger near Regilia, um, El Cantorea, and obviously grow all of the above. Now this year was my year off from hybridizing. You can see that I've taken the year off. There are approximately 50 new Greks of Bill Berger here. These will take a few years before they're ready. Um, many of them have waited several years to get the pollen. But what happens is, so it all begins with hybridization to start with. So we hybridize, we cross some pollens, we put two plants together, I save pollen. Let's go and see the pollen. So I save pollen. This is my pollen bank. Now this is Bill Berger, El Cantorea as well, some Varicia to cross back with the El Cant. Predominantly these are Bill Bergers. And each time a particular plant comes into flower, I save the pollen and store it, freeze it, and pop it in here and name them all. So when I want to do some hybridization later on, I don't have to wait for particular plants to come into flower. I've got a nice big pollen bank here. I recognize what all of these plants look like by their names because I grow them all. So I'm able to make selections based on that. That's where the pollen comes from. What happens next? We collect the seed. So then we collect the seed. This is Bill Burgess seed. That's one little pod. Sad, isn't it? That's after um, some hybridization that I did. Um, didn't get many flowers that came out on that one anyway. This is these, which is some Alcant. So this is an Aladdin hybrid that I've done. And the seeds are all in here ready to go. Do I tip out some? Let's tip out some. A few hundred seeds in each pod. Several pods. So that's probably 30 or so seeds, 50 seeds. So those ones there are ready. These are a new hybrid. Um, so these ones I could plant now. I'm still cleaning these seeds. Why? Because I've got hundreds already planted. So these seeds are currently in the refrigerator stored in this container and basically they're just in a kind of hibernation mode um, as is these this is seed bank for those members that know about seed bank seed banks um, something that I started on this page a few years ago now in this seed bank I'm still going through it all and sorting through codes and adding new stock to the list um, of plant and then once it's all updated I will update it again back to the group so lots of species like Mexicana for example um, example um, lots of different hybrid um, Alcantara as, as well lots of unusual Ekmias etc so this is what the seed bank um, looks like so there's several hundred different ones in here and there's also other seeds which will be added to it as well. There's also ones that um, are getting tested to determine whether or not um, they've still got enough viability to go on the seed bank um, and also to, to ensure that they don't turn into albino. So, for example, this near Regilia was a test that I'd done. Uh, they're all albino. Oh, there's one green one in there. So it's clearly worth planting several hundred seeds just to get one green one, not. So this whole batch will be tossed out. Let's get back to today's job. So today's job is we're going to do some transplanting. So once the seeds have been planted, these have all been planted in a coir mix after they have grown. So some of these are not that old, maybe six weeks old for Bill Burgess. They're ready to be transplanted. Let's just see, there's a few there. There's about 50 bricks here, like I said. Um, so with the Bill Burgess, my rule is once they reach the top of these containers or thereabouts, they need to be transplanted. And that takes about four weeks. 
Now these little babies, these ones here, were planted seven days ago. You can see nice germination. You would have seen me um, washing these seed. So there's the seed all getting washed, removing its outer layer, which is called mucilage. Once we remove that mucilage layer, which is a clear um, gelatinous coating, which encourages lots of different um, fungal growth and things like that, which we don't want. Once that's been cleared, it gets transplanted. Once it's been transplanted, we start growing them. These ones are another week older. And then we get to here. These guys here were planted. Let me see. Six weeks ago. So we're going to do some transplanting. Now I do community pots for Bill Burgess. And what I transplant them into is a combination of peat. Now this peat is hydrogrow peat and it contains lots of nutrients. It's used for hydroponic planting, therefore it already contains fertilizers and feed. I'm not adding any extras because I don't want to burn my little sensitive seedlings. To that I've got a little bit of vermiculite just to keep them moist in the times not like now when it's soaking wet. So at the moment the vermiculite mix is really reduced, like the quantity. Then of course I do have fine perlite. Always add fine perlite to the seed growing mix, the seed raising mix I should say, seedling mix, um, because I want to keep them um, well aerated, I want them to encourage good quick root growth um, and grow nice and strong. So I'm just going to mix all this together, all mixed together, it's like a chocolate brownie mix. It's really friable, not too wet and now we're ready to start. Now I store mine in a polystyrene container with a lid so it will always stay moist and it won't dry out and I've got it available to me whenever I need it. Let's go, let's get some seedlings and start this process. So what I am using is I'm using little 50 mil squat pots. All right, nothing special here. We all know how to do a transplant, don't we? Well, most of us do. So pretty simple. We three quarter fill, not quite fill. It's loose, I haven't compacted it down yet. So I filled to the surface and then from there, I'm just simply gonna create the hole in the center. And once I get the hole in the center, then I'm gonna get my favorite tools. Um, this, for those that don't know, is a cuticle um, pusher used for us ladies to push our fingernails down, the cuticles down. It also makes for the perfect little shovel. Why do I like it? Because it's small and it's really easy to use. So what I'm going to do is I've got my little seedlings. Let's do a quick transplant. I'm going to dig out just enough that I want to go in the centre of that pot. Maybe five or ten, maybe, is all I'm going to aim for for a community pot at this stage. So in the centre of my pot, I've put in my little seedlings. I've given them a code. Every um, Grex gets a code. Um, in this case, it's number eight. And that's the first of that particular Grex that will now go into a tray. So I have uh, these uh, cell trays which hold 15 of these small pots. My Grexes each go in their own individual cell tray. That way there's no confusing. Now, along with the information that's on this first tag, which will be the front tag, all the others just simply need to have the code, 008, easy. Um, in my book and in my phone, I keep a complete list of all of my Grexes. So in the event I was to pick up number eight um, and I didn't have the main tag, close by, once they start to be hung up, I can check my phone at any time and I can find the information on what it is and when it was crossed and the date. So the date will now be added also to the back of this one. Um, and then I'll know forever and a day, needing that for registration purposes. Let's move on, let's do a few trays. Another key thing that I like to use, a labeler. 
Labeler for the first one. Labeler when you're doing multiple of the same. It saves you so much time. Um, and printing wise, they're UV treated um, or resistant fading tags. I haven't had any of these fade yet. Um, fade yet. I've had multiple um, pen ones fade, obviously, and pencil do rub off. So A, you need to keep a list of them. B, you need to find something that's going to last a lot longer. Let's do some work. First tray done. So uh, this tray now can go outside. The reason that this is, um, we're doing these transplants, obviously two reasons, nutrients, but they need more of, they need some growing space as well. We'll burger these particular ones are growing really fast. So they need additional nutrients. It's a beautiful wet day, perfect time to be doing this. This can be done indoors when you're stuck inside. That's Greg's number one of probably, I won't do them all today. I'll do two, four, six, eight, about 15 today. And that will be my job's done. So, happy gardening. Bye now.